I'm going to talk about some SSO sample updates that are in progress. There's been some information that's that's uh, come to our attention recently. We discovered that the Node.js sample in particular, which I'll be talking about here, was returning a middle tier token and I'll have some graphics to kind of explain this a bit more, but it was returning a middle tier token back to the client, which is not something you should do. It's risky and I'll show some more information about that as we go along to kind of explain more about this. So we have uh, on the office add-ins repo, there's a few SSO samples. There's one for Outlook, there's one for Office with ASP.NET, there's one for Node.js. And it was the one for Node.js in particular that, that was doing this. The other two weren't returning the token in that way, although they do treat, if they go to their fallback auth, they do treat the fallback auth that same way. So they are being updated in the process of that. So let me walk through how things should work and how it does work now with Node.js. So when you're doing SSO with the on behalf of Flow, because your goal is to call Microsoft Graph Services, there's several different players in this flow. Uh, the black boxes on this slide are, are showing the parts that you would code. So the task pane add-in is you know, your JavaScript and the task pane that gets displayed. Then you have a middle tier server, which has REST APIs that your add-in is going to call. And the middle tier server will, through delegated access from the user that signs in, is going to call Microsoft Graph. And to make this work, the Office host that you're in, be that Excel, Word, PowerPoint, or Outlook, is involved as well. And the Microsoft Identity Platform is there because that's the platform that's going to create the tokens and also handle authorization requests. So. The way it works is your add-in is going to call get access token. That's an Office JS API that the Office host exposes. And then the Office host will return to you for the currently signed in user an access token. And you know, anytime you get an access token, I think a good question is access to what? Uh, and in this case, it's an access token to your own middle tier server. So the add-in is going to use that to call the middle tier server, a REST API, and then the middle tier server is going to call Microsoft Graph. So now it has to do this on behalf of Flow because that access token only has like user identity and an access as user scope. It has no scopes to Microsoft Graph in it. So it can't be used to call Microsoft Graph. So it'll call out to Microsoft Identity Platform, your middle tier server does this, and say, hey, I want to exchange this for a graph token. Can you give me the scopes for that? And you'd pass along whatever it is you need, like files.read, for example. So the Microsoft Identity Platform will do all the proper checks, make sure the user is consented, and it creates a new graph token that it returns to your middle tier server. So that's this token that's sort of a greenish color. It's a new one. And now I can uh, the middle tier server can call graph, for example, getting a list of file names. Microsoft Graph will check uh, that token and then return the data. I should also point out like every step along the way when these tokens are passed, they're being validated. So your middle tier server is always validating. Microsoft Graph would also validate any token passed to it. So it returns the data, and your middle tier server may do some additional processing on that, and then it also returns data back to the add-in. So this is the uh, successful flow. There's also another flow the sample needs to handle, which is the fallback. This could happen, say, if the Office host you're on doesn't support the API, or maybe an error occurs. So you call get access token to your Office host, and you get an error back. So in this case, the add-in is going to say, OK, we're going to have to do fallback authentication because SSO isn't working. So we'll open up a dialog box. We'll use MSAL, Microsoft Authentication Library, to sign in using the OAuth2 flow. So we're going to use Microsoft Identity, Identity Platform, pop up a dialog box, get them to sign in and consent. So we're going to get back an access token. And this is just like before. This is a, an access token that, again, is for your middle tier server. It doesn't have any graph access in it. So you're going to call your REST API, and at this point, it's the same flow as before. So middle tier server is going to do OBO flow, get the graph token, call graph, data comes back. Maybe you do some additional processing on that data before you return whatever the add-in needs. And then one more scenario that needs to be handled by this, or it is handled in the sample, is if your token expired. Now this could happen like you get your access token from the office host, and it returns the token and say the token was really close to expiring. So this doesn't happen very often, but it can. So you call the REST API, you pass that token in the middle to server, it goes to do the OBO flow. And at this point, the token has expired. 
And so identity platforms is not going to allow that. So you get an error back. And the way we handle this flow is we have the middle tier server return that error back to the client so that the client can say, oh, I need a new token. So you call get access token again. At this point, Office will see that it's expired. It's not going to return an expired token. So it'll it'll refresh it. Behind the scenes, it'll actually request this from the identity platform. It gets the updated token, which is sort of this bluish color, and then it returns that token. And again, it's just an access token to your middle tier server. And you call the REST API, and the whole OBO flow continues again. So, so that's what the sample needs to handle. And, and the thing that we changed is in this OBO flow, the sample was returning that token to the client, at least on Node.js, and which is not something you want to do. So let me share my desktop and just kind of walk through some of the code. Um, let's see. Let's go to. So there's. Um, Variety of links that I'm going to I'll put these into the chat as we go uh, probably right after the presentation so see you have them. Um, so I wanted to point out. Uh, the identity docs are your friend whenever you're doing working with this stuff and so there is this link to the Microsoft identity platform on behalf of flow and it shows pretty much that same diagram I was showing office has an additional wrinkle you know that you have a task pane in the middle tier but it's pretty much the same flow. And down here, there's a warning uh, that talks about, and this is I just want to point this out. Like it says, don't send access tokens that you get in your middle tier anywhere else. And there's a, a list of things that can go wrong if you start doing that. And then in the sample itself, let me sh get the code. Here we go. All right, so this is the Office uh, Node.js SSO sample. And in the folder structure, it's been reorganized a little bit. So you have your middle tier code down here in the routes. So there's a get files route and your server helpers, which are all to help call Microsoft Graph APIs. And then the client side is here under the JavaScripts. So everything that works with SSO is in these three files for the most part, especially SSO auth ES6. There's also a fallback MSAL folder that has, whenever you have to do fallback, this has all the code for doing MSAL because it's sort of like you're implementing two auth systems. So there's a full MSAL implementation here, and then you also have your SSO implementation down here. Um, and see this in action. I've uh, loaded this up here uh, in Excel. And so this office added Node.js SSO. You click get OneDrive file names. And what it does, it goes, it gets an access token, does the whole middle tier OBO flow, and then you get back your uh, file names here and they're printed into the document. One thing I think is interesting that I wanted to show is when you get that token I want to show here like here's where we, we're going to call get access token and I'm going to step over that and then this is the actual access token it's all encoded so I'm going to copy that and there's this site you can go to called jwt.ms and if you put tokens in here you can decode them it's just a handy way to kind of debug things and see what's going on. I find it very useful. So there's interesting things in here, like there's this audience value. This audience value is set to the ID of the app registration I created for my middle tier. So this is how I know this is going to access the middle tier. And so I go over, sorry, I'm jumping around a bit, but this is my Azure app registration. If I go up to the overview, you'll see I have that same ID here. So you can look at any of the claims in here and you'll see like this is pretty much just a user identity token. So it's got my name for my test tenant that I have, preferred username. So this is kind of like open ID values. It also has the scopes, which in this case is only access as user. So you won't see anything here having to do with Microsoft Graph, which is why you know the token on the middle tier is going to be the one that's going to have an audience set to a Microsoft Graph location. So anyway, if you ever need to debug, this is a very handy tool. I just want to make sure folks know about it. And now let's take a look at the code. One thing I wanted to point out, I don't think in the original sample it was very easy to extend. Like if you want to add more functions, it was a little tricky. So the way this works is in the on ready, you know, we're going to wire up the click event. So if somebody says get 10, a list of 10 files from my OneDrive, then it's going to call get file name list. And this is your basic pattern for calling any REST API in your middle tier server. You're going to have one function that makes the call, 
and then another function that handles the response. And the way this is working, this clear message is just clearing the task pane. So it's not an important part of this, but you want to create a request. So in the request, you're going to say, I need to call this particular API on my server. This one's called get user file names. I'm going to have the name of my response handler, which is this function down here. So you want to pass that for a callback function. And then another callback function so that when the request is created, it'll pass it back to you. You'll get this client request. Once you have it, you can go call the web server. This seems a little complicated. Uh, th the main thing I just want to show here is like, say you wanted to get calendar items from graph, right? You could create another function, get calendar items, and you just do the same pattern, create requests, but just plug in the REST API in your middle to server that does that particular function. And then you'll get back the response to your handler. And then you just do whatever it is you need to do with that response. Maybe just write them out to your document or show them in the task pane or whatever. So that's how you would extend this sample. Now to show how it works, let's take a look at the create request. And what create request is doing is basically creating this little structure. It's a client request. Because of all those flows I was just showing, there's various points at which we might need to pop up a dialog. If we're doing fallback, we might need to re request a new token. So we end up looping around sometimes. And I found it was just easier just to create this request to kind of track what was the original thing we we're trying to do because there's there's like a lot of sequencing going on. So this will track our, our off options for SSO, uh, which we just default to true for all these. There's a global variable for auth SSO that's defaults to true, but it'll flip defaults if we have to do a fallback because we have to track whether or not which type of authentication are we trying to do with this request. We track the access token that's in use, uh, the URL that we're going to call on our middle tier, and then the two callback functions, one for when the REST API is completed, and then the other one, which we'll call right after we create this request. So to create the request, we check if we're using auth SSO. If we are, then we're going to go get our token, and then we're going to call our callback function, and we've completed. If not, we're going to go use dialog fallback, pass the client request along, and then the dialog fallback will handle fulfilling that request and then calling back to the original function. And then get access token from SSO. This is where it's going to do the actual get access token call to office, and then it returns that access token. If there's any error, then uh, we go and we have a handler for that. This is actually was in the sample from the beginning to look at various SSO errors. And we'll throw an error back to the caller, which indicates that they're going to have to do fallback. And then what was the other piece of this? So there is a part in the flow later where we need to handle web server errors. So this is, we call the middle tier REST API, but it returned an error. And I mentioned there's a possibility, it's like there's several, we, we track this type, the sample just does this, like it, it creates a type and it says, okay, it could be Microsoft Graph failed. If that happened, we're just gonna show the error for Microsoft Graph. There's a possibility we didn't have access as user for some reason. There's also a possibility this is the error we get from the identity platform if the token expired. And in this case, we're going to say, oh, I need to retry this call. So we're tracking this and we return that back to caller to go do a retry loop. Um, fallouts fails. There's this switch back, switch to fallback off, which will set our global defaults and then create a new request that's using fallback instead of auth SSO. So it gets sort of, I wish it wasn't quite as complicated as this. I've been trying to simplify this and simplify it, but you know, and it's it's open source. If folks have ideas on how to simplify this further, please feel free to contribute. On the server side, I want to point out an important thing. I don't think this was here originally, but so when our middle tier server is called, you always want to validate that token. You don't want to just accept any token that gets passed to your server because it's a public API endpoint. So we have this op helper validate JWT. And then over here, it's going to set our validation options. So we're going to make sure like the audience is correct, like the audience should be for us. And there's some additional information here. If you want to know more about token validation, there is another topic in the identity docs, which I'll throw a link into, because it's really just standard Microsoft identity stuff. It's not really specific to Office. And we're also going to check, we're going to look through the scopes of that token that got passed to us and make sure it is an access as user scope. And then once we've confirmed all that, and 
every API needs to do this that that you're going to expose. Then you would do the on behalf of flow, and we set up you know our graph URL that we're going to call the parameters to you know select the name and just the top ten, and then we use our helper methods to go get that graph data, and then we check to see what happened. If graph returned an error, this is where we set our our error type to Microsoft Graph. We turn that back to the client. If it worked, we'll return a success along with an array that's a list of the file names. And we also check for the expired token scenario. So this is where we would set that. If all else fails, we'll just say it was an unknown error. We just pass along the details and they get surfaced on the task pane. Let's see. Have I just want to make sure I covered everything? Go back to the slides here for just a second. OK, so a couple of important security notes I'll pass along. Uh, one is never cache tokens yourself. It can be risky to do that, especially if you have a bug. You can inadvertently end up exposing user data or leaking a token, and that could be bad. So what you do is you always call get access token. Office caches this for you. So anytime you need it, just call get access token. You don't need to try to go create your own caching mechanism. And if you're using like the on behalf of flow, MCEL does the same thing. Like when you call that on behalf of flow, if the token was already acquired, MCEL's cached it for you. So you don't have to think, oh, I got my OBO token back. I need to store that somewhere and save it. There's no need to do that. You don't need to, well, obviously, you never return tokens from the middle tier back to the client. So I think we covered that pretty well. There is that link to the docs that explains more about what the risk is for that. Make sure you always validate the access token that's past your REST APIs. Um, you might consider a well-known client list, like if you know there are specific tenants you work with, you can configure that in your Azure app registration. So that's something to think about. Also, the client secret. Oh, I didn't show the client secret. Your middle tier will use a client secret to call, and that should be stored securely, like maybe Azure Key Vault. If I switch back, yeah, let me switch back real quick. I just want to show where that secret is. There is this ENV file that's in the sample. Here it is, this one, and this tracks. This is for the middle tier, so it has this client secret. And you know, for testing development purposes, this is fine. We're just saying, like, when you deploy, you don't want to just have it in a file or something. You'd want to actually go put this like an Azure Key Vault. So that was that last slide. Let's see if we have any questions. Okay, I'm going to kind of go backwards here. My SSO access token. The audience is in Outlook includes the server name. Is that something that Outlook does differently from other Office products? As your one had, had just the ID. Um, yeah, I think you might see differences depending on which Office host you're in. Behind the scenes, Office goes and requests the token from Microsoft Identity Platform. And I didn't show that flow because it's it's not something you have to worry about. So Office never creates these tokens. They always come from Microsoft Identity Platform. So there could be subtle differences. The validation should work. I'm just looking at you have the audience API localhost 4200. I'm not sure what you're saying there because that looks like the the, the reply, not the reply. The uh, there's a URI, URI resource URI that you have to use, which isn't the same as the audience. So the audience should always be set to the ID of your app registration. If it's not, the token validation will fail.